I grew up in a family where favoritism was obviously displayed. My youngest brother and I was my dad's favorite. He would do something or give something to us more than our two other brothers, and it's very noticeable. My two other brothers were in the picture, but most of the scene were him being aggressive or physically and verbally violent. But don't get shocked because this is traditional. I'll tell you later why. So, as a kid, I liked the idea of being my dad's favorite. Well, he was a police officer. He gets assigned to different parts of the Philippines. He comes home like once a month for four to five days off. And every time he comes home, I get so excited and thrilled because he always brought us chocolates and and some sweets. I get to have most of it and few for my elder brother. My two younger brothers were one and two years old at that time, so the initial competition was between me and my elder brother. We were about seven to eight years old. My dad would give us sweets and my elder brother could see that mine was more than his. Again, as a kid, I really didn't know that wasn't right. So growing up, I feel so entitled. I thought it was normal being the only girl to have most of the things in life, you know. But what I've learned from this experience is that I will never ever allow my kids to feel that one of them is more than the other. I saw how hurtful it was for my elder brother to be treated unequal to me. It went to a point where he takes his anger out of me. When our parents aren't around, especially our dad, he would spank me until I cry for no apparent reason. Thinking about that now, you know, that's the effect of showing favoritism on children. And I don't hold a grudge or anything against my brother because he was just a kid reacting to his wounded emotions. So let me tell you quickly about what I said earlier about my dad being aggressive and physically violent towards my brothers. Those days in the Philippines where I was born and raised, parents used to discipline kids by physical and verbal pain, like spanking, whipping all over the legs, beating, um, making children squat for hours, humiliation in public, calling hurtful names, and so on and so on. In addition, at school, our teachers are also punishing students the same way. They even tell us that when parents are bidding you, that's because they love you and they want what's best for you. I mean, where would that even fit nowadays? It's all nonsense. A number of children dropped out from school because they didn't want to get bidden simply because they got late for class or they didn't do their homework or they laugh at the teacher while discussing or they got low marks on the exam and so many petty school stuff. Fortunately, that's all changed in 2005 and thanks to the UN for interfering. Growing up, I listened and watched my parents fight a lot. And every time that happened, I was horrified. I always had nightmares in my sleep. There was a moment where I got up in the middle of the night and found my mom crying in the living area. I wanted to tell her about my nightmares. I wanted someone to comfort me and to hug me so that I can go back to sleep. But I couldn't. I couldn't. I thought she's too hurt and sad to even listen to me. So from my room door, I stood there and watched her cry from a distance. I didn't know what to do. Recalling this memory, I realized how my mom suffered in her marriage. How she was trapped in a space where she has to cope up 
She got no friends to talk to or to lean on because my dad wanted her to focus only on him. He was so jealous. Yet, she tried to be the best mom she could possibly be. I didn't understand her while growing up, but after I became a mother, I started appreciating and understanding everything she did and why she did this and that. Like they all say, you will never understand a person until you wear his or her shoes. And I'm telling you now, that's definitely true. So now that I'm a mother, I make my daughter feel that I'm always accessible and convenient whenever she needs me. I always give her hugs and say that I love her. Well, I know my, my mom loves me back then, but it's just that she wasn't very vocal. And we weren't anyway, the environment that I grew up in, we weren't that vocal when it comes to saying I love you or I care for you, you know. And because I didn't get to hear those words while growing up, I want my daughter to have that, you know, what I didn't have, like all other parents out there for sure would do. Anyways, mom, if you're listening, I love you and I miss you. There was once my elder brother got beaten by my dad because he didn't wash his feet before coming inside the house. He came to the room with bruises all over his legs and some part of his body. I felt so bad. I wish I could have said something, you know, to make, make him feel better. But I didn't have enough vocabulary back then to use. He sat on the bed and said, When I grow up, I will beat dad. Just like the way he did it to me. He was so furious but too scared to show it to dad, you know. This shows that physical discipline will only leave grudge to children. And it's not effective, like the old tradition said. That's why I pivot a different path about parenting. You know, I watch Super Nanny Joe Frost where I learned a lot about parenting techniques and proper way to discipline kids without physically or mentally hurting them. I applied it to my daughter and boom, I got an excellent result. Joe Frost, you are my superhero and thank you so much for your show. I watch her on YouTube, the Super Nanny UK and the Super Nanny US. So when you're a parent and you're listening to this, please, please, please watch Super Nanny joe frost and i will guarantee you you will get a wonderful result there were countless of times where my mom would leave the house for days or even weeks sometimes she would take us with her when we are at home but when we are at school she would just leave on her own i remember one night where the four of us were patiently waiting for her to come home that night you know, the feeling of longingness. The night was so quiet. The crickets are chirping and the moon was full. It was so bright that we could just stare at the window next to the main door, hoping that mom would come home and open that door. But she didn't. You know, the feeling, the feeling of I'm in our house, but not at home. That's what it felt at that moment. The house is not complete without the mother. Well, my dad was there. He made us dinner and put us to sleep in our room, but we got up and stayed in the living area. We couldn't sleep. The house felt so empty and cold simply because mom's smell was missing. Hmm, if you know if you know that song, a relevant song called Nobody's Home, the lyrics goes like she wants to go home, but nobody's home. That's where she cried, broken inside, and lost inside. Yeah, yeah, that song. I, I can easily relate to that song. I didn't understand why mom would, would go, you know, and do something like that. Because she's such a caring and loving mother. But as I grow older, it gradually made sense. 
People need some break or me time, they say, once in a while. It helps to refresh or clear our mind. It's very important to take some break when things around get s worse and almost impossible to control. In my own perspective, every time I need a break and I want to go out on my own, I always tell my daughter in advance. I mean, I don't literally say that I'm going to take a break because I'm too、uh, stressed out and all that. I don't say that. But I say it in a way where she, where she could possibly process something, you know, like I'm going out with your Auntie Karen tomorrow for some mountain climbing. You can't come with me because you're still small. When you get big, you can always join if you want to. You stay with your dad for the day and wait for me. And she would, she would often answer me with, Okay, mommy, please bring some sweet buns for me. And the thing is that we always have to be creative on explaining some situations that is appropriate to their age. We don't have to. Lie or literally say something that only adults would understand. Children need some explanations and answers. So, when your kids ask you something, try to answer it in a way that they would understand. Or if you can't find a proper answer at, this, at the moment, you just say, Oh, that's a good question. I have to check on that and get back to you later. And then you have to follow up, you know, take some time to think on how to answer because they deserve it. They have to ask questions when they feel like something is not making sense around them. And that's normal, that's how they grow.